Hi, this is Robin Bremer, .net is my website. And today, <coughs> I'm going to go over one of my favorite subjects because it's very controversial. It's a big hard word for me. <laughs> um, it's controversial, and it's something that should be taught in the churches today, and especially should be taught about in the kingdom because it's part of the kingdom of God. Um, I'm saying um a lot. Sorry about that. It's about raising the dead. <clears throat> now, I did a couple, um, one video, and then I did one, um, uh, you know, article from my book. So I'm going to skip over some stuff in my book, in my chapter, uh, Feed My People Joy, in the chapter on raising the dead. I'm going to skip over some of it, and I want to get to some of the more important things of it. Um, and you'll have to get the book and read it yourself if you want to know about it. But I don't think there's too many people out there teaching about raising the dead. And I believe that as uh, people in the kingdom of God, we're supposed to heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, and preach the gospel to the poor. Because we have the answer to all those things. We have power in the answer because um, we're one with Christ. And we're a new creature and we're an ambassador for the kingdom. So uh, let me just see here. I'm going to skip over some of these parts. Um, the work of the devil is what we're supposed to do uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, we are supposed to uh, destroy the works of the devil. So death is the works of the devil. And when we raise people from the dead, we're taking them uh, from either hell or heaven and bringing them back. Now I'm going to share with you uh, several, two or three different experiences about uh, trying to raise the dead. I, I already shared in my other video about three people I tried to raise from the dead. And I'm going to share about three more people in this video um, a little bit further on. Right now I want to share some scriptures. Uh, the work of the devil is what we are supposed to destroy. The works of the devil. And that's what Jesus did. And here are some of the works of the devil. First of all, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and that's John 10.10. 10. <clears throat> the works of the devil uh, puts demons, oppresses people using demons, sickness, lepers, uh, poor, dead, blind, deaf, uh, destroying weathers. Those are all works of the devil. Any sickness, any disease is a works of the devil. Now, even though your flesh is involved, even though you might eat a ton of potato chips and drink a ton of soda, um, your might get sick because of that but the devil is behind it because of the fall of man of course if you want to be healthy you need to use wisdom in your eating you should desire to eat healthy food and then again you look at it and there's the other side of it um, everything's depleted of its vitamins and nutrition <clears throat> than it used to be thousands of years ago because we've been stripping the land and what we're doing to the land and just the fallen nature of our world so really you can't do anything in this world without prayer. You can't breathe. You can't go nowhere. You can't wake up in the morning. You can't sleep. You can't do nothing without prayer, without knowing God. I don't know how anybody would even want to be alive in this world without knowing God. Because he's so much fun and he's so full of peace and joy. But anyway, back to this. Um, John 5.36 talks about how we have a greater witness that the works that the Father gives Jesus to finish, that is the witness. And the Holy Spirit is in us to be a witness. And part of the witness um, is to do the works that Jesus did. And Matthew 11, 2 lists those works. Matthew 11, 1 through, um, 1 through 6. The, uh, the blind receive the sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now that's Matthew 11. <clears throat> that's called the works of Christ. And as he is, so are we in this world. And we're supposed to do the same works. Now right there, it lists raising the dead up. But you don't hear that teach. You hear, hear casting out demons, which isn't taught enough. Uh, and the, um, you know healing the sick, but you hardly ever hear about raising up the dead. I, I don't know why people are like, ooh, it's spooky or something. I, I don't know. Uh, they're afraid to teach it, but... Man, give it to me. Give me opportunity. Uh, teach me about raising the dead because it's fun and it's awesome. And, okay, so uh, these works were done because we are to be a witness. What are we to witness? We're to witness that our God, who paid for our sin, 
died, paid for our sin by dying, but he didn't just die. How did we know the sin was paid for? He rose from the dead, seated at the right hand of God the Father. He sent down the Holy Spirit. Now, right here is where a lot of churches mess up. They don't preach anything about the Holy Spirit being sent down to fill us and empower us by speaking in tongues, by um, all the fellowship that we have the Holy, with the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have to have that because that's the new covenant. And in my third book, I t it's all about the Holy Spirit and a supernatural lifestyle and living in the supernatural. So I can't wait till it's done because I'm learning as I'm going. It's revelation to me. So back to the subject of raising the dead. Uh, why were we, these works done? They were done to prove that Jesus, our God, is alive. He paid the price for our sins, and now he's alive. And there's some scriptures that uh, talk about that in the chapter that I'm not going to go over. Okay, here's another thing. One of the pastors, no, let me rephrase that. One of the people that I knew that was important that asked to endorse my book wouldn't endorse my book because he didn't believe that we could raise anybody dead that we wanted to raise and he didn't believe that we could raise dead animals well I and I wrote write about that in my book okay and right here one of the things I go over is how do we know who God wants us to raise from the dead now one of the experiences uh, first of all I'll tell you about the experience in a second let me read this Matthew 5, I mean, um, Matthew 10, 5, 8. He, Jesus answers a question. Uh, um, okay, this is a question. I'm answering the question here. Jesus says, as you go, raise the dead. So, when he says, he said to his disciples, as you go, raise the dead, Jesus wasn't with them. They didn't have the Holy Spirit yet because Jesus had the Holy Spirit. They, the Holy Spirit would come on to the people but not live inside of them like he does us. So, they didn't know who... They didn't know who to raise from the dead. He just said, as you go, raise the dead. He didn't say, well, Scott will tell you who to raise from the dead. He didn't say, raise this one, don't raise this one, raise this one, don't raise this, raise this one. And this particular person wouldn't endorse the book because they said that, um, you know, we can't raise whoever we want to. And right here it says, as you go, raise the dead. So if you're going down the street and your neighbor uh, child is... Uh, taken by ambulance or something's happened you can raise them from the dead if they're died or if you come upon a scene of an accident you can raise them from the dead because that's as you are going simple as that okay um, and he said raise the dead he didn't say people he didn't just he didn't qualify to say say people I know of somebody who raised their dog from the dead after the dog was dead for four days laying on the dresser eyes glassed over and probably stinking I don't know how big the dog was, but he was laying on the dresser, but she raised him from the dead. And um, uh, I know somebody else that raised 11 baby chickens from the dead. <clears throat> so I raised a plant from the dead. Okay, so um, I talk about that there. Um, okay, another thing he said, he did not say raise the dead if you have super faith. He did not say, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, but only raise the dead if you have super faith. Only raise the dead if you are have that gift of raising the dead. He didn't say, but wait, only raise the dead if you really, really have no sin in your life. He didn't say, he said, raise, he said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, raise the dead. One sentence, all the stuff in one sentence. So there was no qualifications. There was no do this, if that. Okay. So uh, in Matthew 10, 5, let's see, that's what we're looking at. Matthew 10, 5, what else does he say? He commanded them. Okay, so he commanded them. He didn't say, oh, why don't you go for a walk? And when you go for a walk, um, try to raise this one from the dead maybe heal this one this one deserves healing this one bring back from the dead because they deserve it but this one yeah leave them dead you know he, there was no qualification he commanded them he didn't ask them he told them to he and if he, Jesus commands you to do something that means that you have the power authority and dominion to do it okay let's see here um, 
Okay, here's another thing I point out in my book. If you were commanded to raise the dead, why would you go up to somebody and say, Hmm, God, do you want me to raise this dead person? He said, raise the dead. Why would you have to ask which dead? Why would you have to ask, do you want this one raised? It's like saying, do you want this one healed? Well, Jesus died for all of our sins. So, not this sin or that sin, but all sin. And Jesus was whipped and took all our sickness diseases on him. Not this disease and forget about that disease, but he took all of it. And same thing with the dead. The power is in you to heal the sick and raise the dead. And he didn't go with them, so the only way that they knew what dead to raise is every dead they came upon, they raised. He didn't say only raise certain ones because that they would have been confused. Okay, uh, the, and he said, preach, the, saying the kingdom of heaven is hand, preach, okay, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. <clears throat> Same sentence, and it's part of the kingdom. And we are the kings on this earth, and we are the kings on the earth, and, and we are to bring God's kingdom, which is in us, in power, and command everything to line up with the word of God. God's word is forever settled in heaven, and our job as kings and having dominion and authority on earth is to settle his word on earth. And sickness, death, disease, poverty, lack, and fear are all um, things that are from the fall of the earth and is not heaven on earth, and we have dominion and authority to bring that all into um, line up with God's word. And he doesn't just say raise the dead right after they die if you come in the fresh meat. He doesn't say that. He says raises, he raised the dead. And he interrupted funerals and he raised the dead from the funerals. Now, I want to tell you this one story. <laughs> Can't get into too many details because of sharing some of this stuff because I'm on Facebook and my whole <laughs> I mean people know me and people know some of these people who died and I don't want to get into too much detail but there was this kid that I knew personally um, and my kids knew personally and he died and when he died his body um, was destroyed by fire and I wanted to call him back from the dead and I had two questions on my mind. <clears throat> Question one was, I know he wasn't living a godly lifestyle. I know he was doing some stupid stuff that Christians who don't know any better would say he went to hell because of some of his behavior. He was not, uh, he was doing, he, he, he was made some mistakes like we all do. <clears throat> so. I wanted to call him back because no mother wants to see their child dead. And I wanted to call him back, but my other thought was, hmm, he's, he's burned, uh, you know, he's, his physical body is destroyed and it's, and it's burned. Should I call him back or not? You know, it's kind of wavering. And God said to me, he says, what does it matter what's wrong with his physical body or what killed him when I raise people from the dead? everything's brand new they're they're not going to come back and die of cancer a second time after you raise them from the dead from dying from cancer they're not going to have cancer so he would come back from the dead and he wouldn't be so eaten up with fire that he would die again and so that's what God said to me so in that experience I was in church one day and um this was, I don't know if it was after his funeral or before his funeral. And I was just speaking his name. I was singing and worshiping in tongues during praise and worship. I was just standing there singing and worshiping in tongues because God is so awesome and mighty and good. And I started calling this boy's name. And I was calling his name and I was singing his name. And I was saying, whatever, let's just make up a name. Let's say his name was uh, Joseph. So I said, I was saying, Joseph. I speak life into your body, Shandara Kumari Allah, Joseph, come back to life, you know, like that. I was just, and I was singing in tongues, Shandara Kumari Allah, you know, whatever. I was singing in tongues and I was singing his name. Well, the most awesome thing happened. This is, um, all of a sudden, Joseph, who, which is not his real name, was singing with me. It was so cool. 
and it was like my words were tumbling like a stream coming down like a banner coming down from heaven like this and his words and singing was twirling around my words coming down to heaven and it was so cool because it was supernatural and I was allowed to have a visitation to heaven in a sense he didn't he didn't come down to earth it was his praise and his worship because he was in heaven it was his praise and his worship answering my call back to him and just worshiping and joining and worshiping with God with me and his voice was like ribbons my voice was a red like a red ribbon and his voice was like a white ribbon and they were just twirling together down and worshiping God together and it was the most awesome thing I knew that he wasn't going to come back and he didn't want to come back and it was okay and it was really beautiful and I had known this young man and I told his mother at the funeral um, I told his mother about this and it was a great relief to her to know that he was in heaven and to know that but a lot of Christians would say ah oh, he he was sinning or oh he, he he did this and oh he did that he's going to hell but you know what there's only one sin that sends us to hell and that's not receiving the free gift of Jesus paying the price for our lifetime of sins he died for our sins before we were even born before we even committed one sin he paid for our lifetime of sin and um, anyway so that's one of my stories so let me get back here to this and I'll share um, let's see I had another story in mind to share two more yeah <clears throat> uh, okay uh, what else do I want to share with you Jesus raised the dead like I said from funerals uh, Lazarus was dead four days and he stank, stank and then he even went further yet when Jesus rose from the dead himself the graves and tombstones of saints that had been dead for years and years and years opened up and they came out of those graves whole and they walked around the city and probably preached Jesus um, I don't know how long they stayed on earth or when Jesus went back to heaven that's probably when they went back to heaven and got their you know in their bodies and anyway so he's raised people from the dead <clears throat> that have been dead for years and years and years when he resurrected um, uh, I'll go over some some other things another time but I just want to share with you since my dogs are barking and making noise here I just want to share with you two more experiences <clears throat> of trying to raise people from the dead one was a real good friend of mine but when a, she was a child she was orphaned and some really bad stuff happened to her from a child when she was a child and that stuck with her whole lifetime and caught it caught her caught her up into some sort of behavior patterns and lifestyles um, of, of feeling inadequate and unloved and she was hadn't because she was an orphan she had absolutely no family and when she died I wanted to call her back because she was a really funny person I like really liked her had spent some time with her but I felt as though there was no reason to call her back <clears throat> that she was not happy here and to call her back from heaven there's no purpose so I just didn't bother calling her back from the dead and you know sometimes you might feel that way it's like what would she come back to and the other time I knew this person too and this person was taken by ambulance to the hospital they couldn't resuscitate her and uh, I was already praying from the time I got the phone call to the time I got to the hospital and um, spent a lot of time praying in tongues and when I got there you know unfortunately she had died and I was with her family members and I was allowed to go into the room and pray for her but because it was an awkward time I was in the hospital room with family members I didn't say I came here and I believe I can resurrect her and I want to pray for her they allowed me to go in the room because I went into the room with a family member and I prayed under my breath and I touched her hand and held her hand and tried and, and prayed to bring her back but I only had a very few minutes like two three minutes again with her if I had been in the room alone with her I would have uh, tried harder because I really felt as though God said that this was not what he wanted for her that he wanted her uh, that she wasn't finished that she had work to do on the earth and he wanted her back here um, and I believe this person and a couple of other that I prayed for that they stayed in heaven 
because it was their will but it wasn't God's will and and so when I called her back I didn't push the issue because other family members were with me and I just didn't feel as though they understood and were ready to receive that although I really felt strongly that it was not God's will for this person to leave earth now so that is a experience of you know my third my sixth experience of raising somebody from the dead and I believe I had seven opportunities and in one of my other videotapes I'll share the other thing with you and also some visitations of demons and and uh, supernatural stuff so that's it that I want to share with you today my name is Robin Bremer dot net is my website and I got lots of things I rather share with you face to face because it's so exciting than when I get lazy sometimes I do it in my book I don't want to put my makeup on and get in front of the camera and and do it and I just will post something up there so forgive me when I get lazy but I really rather talk to you because I really find it exciting to see you face to face and make sure that if, if what I am saying and sharing with you ministers to you, make sure you share it with your friend because to be set free from the bondage of religion and into a personal relationship with Jesus is life changing. It changed me and I want it to change you. I want it to change your friends. So share uh, share my posts, like my posts, leave comments so I know it's changing people's lives. Share your experience with me. So robbremer.net and I will talk to you tomorrow.